morning and welcome to Connect Church Maidstone. My name's Laura, I'm one of the leaders here and I'm so pleased that you're able to join us today. I wonder if you've ever been invited somewhere really special, somewhere with perhaps a posh invitation that gives detailed instructions about where to go and what to do and probably what to wear. Places with a dress code really make you have to fit in with a particular set of instructions. But the great news this morning is that church doesn't come with a set of instructions about how you should behave. There is no dress code. You are invited to come just as you are. Not worrying about what you look like or the clothes that you're wearing or your background. But just coming to meet with God, your Father, in a relaxed, personal way. And I really hope that from our worship and from our word this morning you will get a real sense of that. Perhaps for the first time, perhaps for the 15th millionth time, it really doesn't matter. Our prayer is that you really would just engage with God in a way that is perfect for you. Let us pray. Lord, I just pray for everyone watching here today that you would just be with them. Lord, that you would just open our hearts, open our eyes, open our minds, Lord, to meet with you afresh today. Lord, I thank you that you don't have strict dress codes or behaviour codes, that you welcome each of us. Whatever state we're in, Lord, whether we're bringing rags and baggage or whether we're in our best finery, Lord, that you see what's on the inside. Lord, you know us and you know our hearts and you love us anyway. And Lord, I just pray as we start our worship this morning that we keep our eyes on you, the author and perfecter of our faith. And Lord, we just thank you for your love. Amen. I'm going to hand over to the band now, and then later on, we'll have a talk for the children, and then David will be bringing the word. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn till I met you. I was breathing, but not alive. All my feelings I tried. Yeah. 
at the weight of your glory I needed shelter, I was an orphan Now you call me a citizen of heaven When I was broken, you were my healing Now your love is the air that I'm breathing I have a future, my eyes are open Cause when you call my name time of desperation when all we know is doubt and fear there is only one foundation we believe we believe broken generation when all is dark you help us see there is only one salvation we believe we believe we believe
We believe in the Holy Spirit and that He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered hell. We believe in His resurrection and that He's coming back again. If faith can do let the mountains move We come with expectation We're waiting here for you Waiting here for you You're the Lord of all creation Still you of salvation you loved us from the start waiting here for you with our hands lifted high in praise and it's you Singing
Good morning, Connect Kids. Today is Father's Day, as I'm sure you're all aware. Dads, granddads and father figures are many things. Providers, teachers, mentors, spiritual leaders, taxi drivers, knights in shining armour, wrestlers, magicians and the most amazing joke tellers you will ever come across. But their most important job is to model the love of God to their children. We should love our dads knowing that they can show us how much God loves us. Now, I want you to meet someone. This is Horace. Horace is an Arica palm. I've had Horace for just over a year now, and to be perfectly honest, I've done really, really well to keep him alive. Just last week, when it was really, really hot, I forgot to water him. And as you can see, he's got a few brown patches where he dried out. And it wasn't the first time I'd forgotten to water him either. Now I know someone who is really good at looking after plants and flowers. Someone who takes great care of them. And that's God. He plants them, waters them and provides exactly what they need. The Bible says he cares for the birds and the flowers. And those things aren't nearly as important to God as his most beloved and precious creation, his people. I'm going to read a story from one of my favourite books, the Jesus Storybook Bible. It's from Matthew 5 and 6 and also in Luke 12. Wherever Jesus went, lots of people went too. They loved being near him. Old people, young people, all kinds of people came to see Jesus. Sick people, well people, happy people and sad people. And worried people, lots of them, worrying about lots of things. What if we don't have enough food or clothes? Or suppose we run out of money? What if there isn't enough and everything goes wrong and, and we won't be all right? What then? When Jesus saw all the people, his heart was filled with love for them. They were like little flo they were like a little flock of sheep that didn't have a shepherd to take care of them. So Jesus sat them all down and talked to them. The people sat quietly on the grassy mountainside and listened. From where they sat, they could see the blue lake glistening below them and little fishing boats coming in from the night's catch. The spring air was fresh and clear. See those birds over there, Jesus said. Everyone looked. Little sparrows were pecking seeds from the stony path. Where do they get their food? Perhaps they have pantries all stopped up. Cabinets full of food. Everyone laughed. Whoever's seen a bird with a bag of groceries? No, Jesus said. They don't need to worry about that because God knows what they need and he feeds them. And what about these wild flowers? Everyone looked. All around them, flowers were growing. Tulips, daisies and pure white lilies. Where do they get their lovely clothes? Do they make them? Or do they go to work every day so they can buy them? Do they have closets full of clothes? Everyone laughed again. Whoever's seen a flower putting on a dress? No, Jesus said. They don't need to worry about that because God clothes them in royal robes of splendour. Not even a king is that well dressed. They had never met a king, but as they gazed out over the lake, glittering and sparkling below them, the hillsides dressed in reds, purples and golds, they felt a great burden lifted from their hearts. They could not imagine anything more beautiful. Little flock, Jesus said, you are more important than the birds, more important than the flowers. The birds and the flowers don't sit and worry about things, and God doesn't want his children to worry either. God loves to look after the birds and the flowers and he loves to look after you too. Jesus knew that God would always love and watch over the world he had made, everything in it, birds, flowers, trees, animals, everything, and most, most of all, his children. Even though people had forgotten, the birds and the flowers hadn't forgotten, they still knew their song. It was a song all of God's creation had sung to him from the very beginning. It was a song people's hearts were made to sing. God made us. He loves us. He's very pleased with us. It was why Jesus had come into the world to sing them that wonderful song, to sing it not only with his voice, but with his whole life, so that God's children could remember it and join in and sing it too. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for our Connect Kids children and any other children watching this morning. 
We thank you for dads, granddads, uncles, older brothers and other father figures who love and cherish their children. We thank you for the excellent role models they are to us all. And we thank you that you first modelled it to all of us who are fathers. I pray your blessing over all the children, their dads and all the families in our church and anyone connected with our church. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, I'm David and I'm one of the leaders here at Connect Church and I'm just going to share a few thoughts for you about Father's Day, based around some resources I found from Home for Good, a charity dedicated to finding forever homes for every child in the care in the UK. But first, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us and pray that you'll be with us today. We pray that you'll just open people's hearts to hear the words I'm saying, Lord. Amen. So today is Father's Day, so it seemed appropriate to base my sermon around that special day. So I want to spend some time now talking about different fathers. Now, you could look at fathers as just a bi being a biological male parent. Complicated, hey? But as we will see, they can actually take many different forms. So let's spend some time looking at the Bible, people who acted as fathers, even though they were not biological parents. In the book of Esther, we can read about Mordecai. He cared for his orphan cousin Esther as if she were his own daughter. He helped her to find her place and God's purpose for her life. Through his intervention and guidance and her bravery and willingness to put herself at great risk, the Jewish people were saved from being killed. We can read about David in 2 Samuel 9. He made a special, flat, a special place for Mephibosheth the son of jo Jonathan, at his table. This was really surprising, as it was customary for a new king to round up all the surviving members of the previous king's family and have them executed to ensure that they could no longer be a challenge to the throne. I would imagine that when Mephibosheth, got it right that time, was summoned to see King David, a dinner invitation was probably the last thing he was expecting. David's commitment to seeing that Mephibosheth Mephibosheth was provided for and cared for throughout his life was all the more important as he was unable to walk and without David's intervention life would have been extremely bleak for him. We read in several places in the Bible about how Paul acted as a spiritual father and mentor to Timothy, pointing him to Jesus and helping him to lead others to Christ. In his first letter to Timothy he addresses him as my true son in the faith. That's in 1 Timothy 1 2. Timothy's biological father was Greek, but no evidence is given that he was a Christian, so Paul took up the mantle as a spiritual father of him. Now, probably one of the most famous fathers in the Bible has to be Joseph, who was an earthly adopted father for Jesus. How hard it must have been to know that the child he was bringing up was not his own blood and that he was so special. Yet, Joseph cared for Jesus and brought him up as his own son, trusting in God all the time. Now, none of these people that I've mentioned have been biological fathers, but they acted as fathers to the people in their care. I suppose you could say that they took on something they didn't really need to, but they did it anyway, and what a blessing that must have been to the people under their wings. Now, each of these examples we briefly looked at have been great father figures, but I know this is not always the case, and many people don't have a great relationship with their father or may no longer have their father around. So today might be a great day for you when you can celebrate that special person in your life, or it might be a really tough day, or maybe it's a bit of both. Now, I'm not a big fan of buying cards for people full stop. That's Laura's forte, so I leave it to her. And choosing a Father's Day is a real minefield. You seem to have three choices, sport, gardening or beer. But what if the man you're buying for is not sporty, doesn't know the difference between dandelions and dahlias and prefers Ribena to Budweiser? The section is already diminished by about 90%. What about the world's greatest dad and my dad is my superhero type selection of sentiment too? 
maybe that's tricky. The person you're buying a card for might not actually be your perfect dad. He might be your stepdad who has been there for you as long as you can remember. Taking on difficult role with grace and loving you even though you don't contain his DNA. Or similarly, an incredibly adoptive father who you care for deeply and feel gratitude to for all they've done, but you still struggle to call them dad. Or perhaps he is your biological father, the one who provided half your genetics, but since then he's not been especially involved. He could be an incredible foster carer who has steadfastly walked with you along a twisted traumatic path, who you still call by his first name even though he's been a more, more of a dad to you than anyone else. And while all this confusion of going on for others, it could be that you don't need to purchase a card even though you long to, because that person you desperately want to give one to is no longer about. And the complex emotion of his day are not neatly summed up by many cards available in the shops. As with a lot of life, it's not simple for so many of us. The idea of father is weighed down with extra baggage from our own life experiences. And yet, lots of men do press on to throw off their own experiences as they seek to be great fathers and father figures to the next generation. Just because you may have been through a tough time of it yourself doesn't mean that you have to be the same going forward. Now, whether they are your children through birth or adoption, or you're committed to fostering and caring for them as long as they need, whether you're a youth leader, a teacher, a godfather, a grandfather, an uncle, a mentor, or a neighbour, or you're just a guy seeking to set a good example, the efforts you're putting in to love and nurture and to protect and empower those you care for and support is totally worth it and hugely valuable, and God sees that. But let us not forget about all those mothers out there who also have to act as father figures for their children due to various circumstances. You should be encouraged today too. But in the midst of all these positive role models, maybe we can't shake off our own experience where the idea of a father is synonymous with neglect, abandonment, abuser, harsh, absent, strict or distant. What can we do? Well, we have the perfect example of a father figure in the Bible. God. We read a lot about God being our father and this is right. The Bible is clear that he longs us to know him as Abba which is a really intimate name for father. Not the dad as explained in the chintzy Chris, uh, Christmas card, greeting card we get to choose from, but the real, authentic, precious, wholehearted, committed, generous daddy who cares so deeply and will never leave us or forsake us. We can know him like this because of our adoption into his family. In Ephesians 1, verses 3 to 5, it says, all praise to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms, because we are united with Christ. Even before he, was, he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. That is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure. Now, how cool is that? And yet, even as we read it, our minds could be clouded by our own experiences of our earthly fathers who may have let us down. How can we know God as Father if we have had a bad experience with our earthly father? Now, it's not easy, but the answer is there in Ephesians 1. God was our Father first. Even before he was made the world, he loved you, and he chose you. Before you were conceived into a little bundle of cells, you were conceived in his heart. Before you were born to your earthly family, you were adopted into his family. Before you were able to form a smile, he smiled over you with pleasure. He was your father first. Before any birth father or other father figure could do anything wrong, and before any birth father or father figure could do everything right and be a wonderful dad to you, the great God of the universe was your Abba. 
he is the one we can look to first for reassurance, for comfort, for strength when life is hard. He is the one that shapes our identity and gives us purpose. He is the one who holds us when we're hurting and cheers us on when we persevere. He is the one who will never and can never leave us. Even though we may lose our earthly dads through distance, difficulty or death. He is the one who loves you in a way your mind is never going to ever be able to comprehend fully. He is your father first. He sets the greatest example for men to follow. He shows us how to live, how to love, how to give and how to grow. We can all take these lessons into our everyday life. Be that as a father, a mother, a brother, a sister, a friend. Let's all learn to love others as God first loved us. And let's take, take steps today to change and be better at loving others. But today especially, let's celebrate our dads and the father figures who have shaped us. Thank you to those who do all they can to care for others in whatever form that may take. May we always know and remember that God was our father first and always will be without ever letting us down. As I close now, I'd just like to pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the example that you have set for us. I thank you, Lord, for being a great father to all of us, Lord, that you love us, you care for us, you look out for us. Whatever we do, you loved us first and you will always be there for us. And I just pray, Lord, that you'll help us all to know that, Lord. I pray that you will be with those that are hurting today, those that find this day tough for whatever reason, Lord. Just bring them peace and comfort and just help us to use your example of the perfect Father so that we can learn to love others as you have loved us. Amen. The band are going to now lead us in one last song, but if anything you've heard today or there's anything you want to talk to and there's any way that we can support you, Please do contact the leadership team on the details that are on screen now. Thank you. You are the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation.
You saw. 